Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to our nature study drawing. If you had a look at our lesson that we did yesterday, you would know we are going to draw a praying mantis. Now, why do you think it's called a praying mantis? Well, it's one of the very few, if not only, bug that looks like he's praying all the time. Today we're going to go through a step-by-step -step guide teaching you how to draw a praying mantis. All right, are you ready? If you look in front of me, I've chosen to use pencil crayons today. I have made sure that my pencil crayons are sharp because there are intricate spaces that I am going to color in and therefore I need to make sure that my pencils are ready for those small spaces. I also have a sharp pencil with me. Now before we start, remember what we do? We write the name of the insect in the top left hand corner. So today we are going to write the word praying What an appropriate name. Now, a praying mantis is an insect. We know this because it has six legs. Even though two of his legs look like claws in the front of him, they're quite different to the rest. But let's start with our drawing. We're going to start by drawing his wing. Again, let's remember. The center of our page is right in the middle and we're going to support our page with our left hand and have a nice firm grip on our pencil in the hand that you write with. All right, we're going to start by using a straight line for his wing and then as you get to the end of his wing it curves round and it slants back to the top. And then for his abdomen, his tummy, we're going to take it down and we're going to join his little tummy up like that. Did you see what I did? We started with a straight line, curve, and then at a slant back to our starting position. And then again, from our starting position, a rounded abdomen to about two thirds of the way down the wing. Now we're going to draw his thorax. His thorax is another part of his body to which his legs are connected. Now his thorax looks a little bit like a long oval. So again, we can start at the same starting point and we're going to curve it round a little bit like an oval and back again. You should look like you have a little bit of a curved structure in front of you. Now his thorax has got some detail in it. It's got a slight line over here just marking the different areas in his thorax. Okay, so we've got his wing, his abdomen, and here is his thorax. And now for his beautiful head. Now I love a praying mantis because he has got the most beautiful little eyes that look at you. So on top of his thorax over here, we're going to do a little circle. There it is, just a little circle. And we're going to have a curved line and then another little circle. And do you know why? Because this praying mantis is looking at you. <laughs> and then his little face curves down. Oh, there's a lovely aeroplane going over. 
It's almost got a little snout. There we go. Okay. And then from his mouth, he's got his jaws that come out. Little jaws like this. Can you see them? They come out. Okie dokes. And then we can just connect him to his thorax. Now it's very important that we don't draw his front legs too small because they are indeed not small. In fact, they are strong. They almost look like they've got muscles. But they are, again, connected in segments. Do you remember that word? Segments. So we're going to start with the first one. The first little segment. And then this segment goes down at a bit of a curve. And then this part is actually a jagged line. He's got razor sharp serrated edges to grip his prey. And then it comes up again and it's connected in another segment. Also with a bit of a jagged edge. And then it curves down. And these are very important because these are his strong little legs that connect to his prey and they come down like this. There we go. Now he doesn't only have one, he's got two of these up here. So we're going to draw the other one just behind this one. Again, down with a bit of a serrated edge. And then this one comes up with another bit of a serrated edge up to here. And then another curved line. And then his little claws in the end. Okay, he's looking good so long. Now we're going to go and complete the drawing with his other legs. Now he's got two here. How many does he need? Six. So we're going to draw another four here. Let's start. His little legs are again segmented. Here's the first segment which connects to the next segment, which connects to the next segment, which connects to his little foot. And then the second one comes down, segment to another little segment, to another little segment, to his little foot and then just a little bit further down on his abdomen he has his last two legs and these are a little bit bigger he has got strong legs and did you notice in the video when he's stalking his prey he uses his legs to balance on the leaf and when the wind blows the leaf he actually sways with the leaf he uses his legs to sway so that he is very camouflaged against the plant he is sitting on so his prey doesn't see him. Okay, there are his beautiful legs. And then right on the top here, he's got little feelers that he uses to sense. And you can just draw them in here like that. What a beautiful little creature. If you look carefully, his wings have got very slight little veins that go down. All right, and we can even draw a little ground or a leaf that he's sitting on just to give him something to sit on. Okay, boys and girls, now let's look at color. If you have a look at the image on the website, or ask mom to print it for you, or even have a look in a book, you will see that the colors I've chosen are very similar to a real life praying mantis. Okay, now if you look carefully at the image, you will see that most of the praying mantis is a lime green. So if I look at my colors, this is a bit of a darkish green. This is a bit of a grassy green. This color is actually a lovely lime green. And so I'm going to use my pencil crayon to add some lovely lime green to my praying mantis. He's got quite a lot of lime green on his 
abdomen. And then his thorax has got some lovely lime green at the top here. And then of course his little head has got lime green in it as well. And then even his legs. So you can take your lime green pencil crown or uh, paints if you're using those and add some lime green to your praying mantis all over. Even these little guys are lime green. There we go, beautiful. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna add some highlights. So we've got the base color on now we're going to add some highlights to give him a real life feeling. So first of all, we're going to take a darker color. So I've got a bit of a brown here. It can either be a brown or like a light orange. And if you look carefully at the image, you will see that his little uh, feelers, not his feelers, his um, front legs have got a bit of a dark undertone on them. Just a little. We can add over here, not too much, there we go. Remember that when you use pencil crayons you want to blend the colors nice and neatly so that they seem seamless. So you very gently blend the colors in, blend the colors in, see them. Okay. Now have a look at your picture and see where else is there a darkish sort of brown. Now his feelers are actually a little bit of a brown yellow color. So we can add a little bit of brown here and to this one. And we can even add a little bit of yellow just to give it a bit of a highlight. Now interestingly, a praying mantis's eyes are also green. I don't know if you noticed that, but they are very green. So his whole little body blends beautifully into the flower. Right, let's go to his abdomen. His abdomen is an interesting little part of him. Although most of a praying mantis is green, the underside of him is a little bit darker. So over here, we can add a bit of a darker brown just to give that shadowy feel. And then on his legs as well, he's also got a little bit of a, a darker shade. There we go. Okay, and his little feet. Remember, not all leaves are completely green, and so I think this brown adds a little bit of variation for when he needs to blend in with other leaves. Okay, now let's go to the top part of him, his thorax. Now his thorax and the top parts of his legs have actually got a little bit of a darker green in them. So his lovely lime green coats, and then if you look closely underneath on his thorax, he's got a bit of a darker undertone there, and then the top parts of his legs as well. So you can just do the top parts and blend them in a little bit, and these top parts and blend it in a bit. Boys and girls, do you see how we use different colors to create different shades and impressions on creatures? gives them a three-dimensional um, element and it, a more realistic version of who they are. Okay, now we're going to take some highlights, some yellow. Yellow is a wonderful color to add highlights. And we're just going to add a bit of hair yellow all over the top of him to give him a lovely sheen. Almost like a glossy leaf. He wants to be a glossy leaf. Here we go. Okay, boys and girls. How does your praying mantis look? Have a look at it and see what you think. 
I would also love to see your praying mantis. So if you're able to take a photo of the praying mantis you have done, please do and send it to me. I've seen some beautiful other insects, um, some ladybirds and butterflies. And so I will really look forward to seeing some of your praying mantises. I hope you enjoyed your drawing lesson, boys and girls. All right, have a lovely afternoon. Bye. Thank you.